Alright, I got done with the uh, Shamrock Shuffle, half marathon, not in harmony, won it by about 10 minutes. There wasn't as many people here as there normally is. <coughs> I think the weather scared some people away because it was cold. It's still only 30 degrees out before the race. There was a little bit of a snowstorm that hit probably a half an hour before the race even started. I was probably 15 minutes from the race. The roads were bare, and then all of a sudden it was just like a whiteout. It dropped probably a half an inch to an inch of snow real quick. So the last 15 minutes uh, getting to the race sucked. <coughs> I wasn't sure what was actually going to go on weather-wise the rest of the race or the rest of the day. So I looked at the radar when I got here. Luckily, it cleared up. There's only like one more cloud maybe coming. It's, I don't know if it's past this now or if it's still coming or what it's doing. Anyway, so that was interesting uh, getting here the last few miles or so. Well, 15 minutes as I said. <coughs> Temperature, again, staying steady at 30, uh, 30 degrees. Checked in. Uh, as you see, like my pre-race, if I uh, post it, I was confused what shoes to wear, whether my breakthroughs or my Norfolk Pros. I went with the breakthroughs after uh, stepping on the snow real quick on the outside of the vehicle. That was actually the right decision because the Norfolk Pros wouldn't have had enough grip for the first couple miles of the race, whereas the breakthroughs did, and I actually needed the grip. The first four miles actually sucked. It was kind of slushy and wet and slick. So if I wore the Endorphin Pros, I probably would have slipped and my times would have been way off. I think I finished at like 132. That was probably seven minutes maybe slower than last year. Just because of the weather and the conditions of the race itself. So the first four miles, Again, was slick, slushy and wet. I could feel in the back of my legs, the water just, you know, splashing up, making my legs cold a little bit. Even with calf sleeves on and the pants. I have compression shorts, shorts, yeah, long sleeve pants, wore my sauna seat top, long sleeve shirt, gator, uh, visor beanie. Can't be warm, but I also uh, got really sweaty probably about mile eight or so. Then I started getting cold. At the finish line, I probably hung around a little bit too much and I started getting cold. I had to go inside before even I came to the vehicle because I just, there was no way I was gonna be able to sit in the vehicle uh, for a minute or two while I warmed up. I needed to get warmed up first before I came to the vehicle. I'm still in this uh, wet clothes. I gotta change here. I'm still trying to get warmed up. So, trying to think here. I think by two miles in, I had a minute on the one kid who was finished second, 10 minutes behind me. By mile four, I probably had three and a half, four minutes on him. So he was doing like a seven minute pace. I was probably doing six and a half, six, I think. I was probably about 25 minutes for the first four miles of the race, if I remember correctly. So I just figured if he was going to stay steady, that was enough cushion for me the rest of the race, as long as I didn't do nothing stupid. But the first four miles is basically uh, weaving in and out around town. So I got to see him a couple of times, like early in the race, you know, to judge how uh, close he was in the rest of the competition. He was the closest, and then there was a couple of people behind him by a couple of minutes, so I figured I could get top three as long as I didn't know nothing stupid. <laughs> so then, there's probably 300 feet in those first four miles, give or take 50 feet. And we got in this long, straight stretch from like mile four to mile eight and a half. It's like an out and back. And that's got the rest of the elevation of 800 feet in it. But, uh, between four and 8.5. Yeah, probably the 800 feet's all in that. It's really only 
gain maybe another 80 feet, 100 feet on the way back, so it's all on the way out. <clears throat> I looked back a few times, I didn't really see him close or even in view as I hit the hills. I tried to attack him hard early on just to put a nice gap, and that way he didn't see me on him, maybe like defeated him a little bit mentally. I don't know if it worked or not, but it was one of their strategies I tried to implement. Second hill, I did have to stop for a couple of seconds and take a nice uh, little walk break. I didn't stop, I just walked up with a few feet, maybe like a five second walk break, because it got really steep and I felt my legs burning. I was like, well, you got a nice lead right now. Don't burn your legs up because there's nobody pushing you. You don't want to burn your legs up and then not have anything the rest of the race, because there's still like half the race left at that point. I only took water at my own five on the way out. I think it's mile five, somewhere around there. Then I didn't take anything on till the way back. Got out to the last turn, which is we'll just call it eight and a half. I don't know what it really is, but maybe eight six, some somewhere in that eight and a half range. <clears throat> We're at like eleven 1 hundred feet of gain. Maybe eight or nine down. Uh, I'm not sure because I can't remember what the down was. I have to figure it out. But on the way back, I looked at my watch, I had 55.31 is when I made the turn and I didn't pass second place until like 59, 12 or something like that. I had like six, six and a half minutes between me seeing him. So I had a heck, heck of a nice gap, you know, because even though my watch was, uh, was only like a three minute difference, you have to times that times two. Because he's still going out and I'm already coming back. So when we meet, we have to time that times two. So that was like six and a half minute lead on him. So I figured if I was doing like, we'll just call it six and a half, seven range. We'll just make it seven. So if I stayed under eight and he stayed steady, I had the race. Uh, did stop and pee one time, which probably took me 15, 20 seconds because it was so cool to get going. Downhill on the way back killed me for some reason. I'm not sure what happened. I tried to use some free speed, you know, going down, but for some reason I could never engage it. I was doing the lean forward, but my I couldn't get the bend in my legs. I don't know if they were tired, or if they were just cold or what, but I just couldn't get the bend to make my legs turn over quicker to get that free speed and uh, free effort going. And then it just ended up, my body just kept leaning back, hit kill strength, and then I kept feeling it, feeling it really kicking my ass on the downhill for some reason. I, I, don't, I don't know what was up. It's kind of worrisome because it did make my legs really tired on that downhill and the rest of the race. So I don't know if it was from my hill work or my fart legs this week, but something was up. I have to figure that out yet. I'm still kind of feeling a little bit. Might have to take it easy on the 5K. But after the downhill, when it flattened out, pretty much pulled back a little bit to try to save my energy from 5k in one mile since I knew I had such a lead. Save some energy and recover a little bit. Nothing really else exciting. Just wanted to get the race over because I felt my body was really sweaty at that point and I knew I was starting to get cold so I just wanted to be uh, done. Cruised in, probably a 10 minute, yeah, it's a 10 minute lead. Maybe 12, somewhere in that range, I don't know. The results aren't posted yet. Stood around the finish and froze. Still trying to warm up a little bit, gotta change my clothes now. Get ready for the 5K. In the one mile yet. I think I might just take it easy for the 5K. Maybe concentrate on the mile. Because there's probably gonna be some nice cool uh, studs for the 5K. And I don't really have enough juice left in my legs to try to compete with them. So we'll see what happens. 